In this video, we're briefly going to talk about using functions in Octave. So functions are similar to, to a script, except they're more useful than using a script when you're doing something on a regular basis, uh, or the only thing being changed from use to use is one or more values. So a script is valuable because it shows you exactly what the sequence of logical steps is in computing an output of some sort. But if all you're doing from one run to the next is you're just changing numerical values, then maybe you don't want to see the script each and every time. I'll give you, as an example, consider a least common multiple. I don't really want to see what the code is doing each and every time. I just want it to compute the least common multiple, and I just want it to output the result. So that's when it's more useful. So it's like a mathematical function when you think about functions and computer programming. You have some input in mathematics. Then it, that input goes into some black box, right? Some, something that's going to manipulate x in some way. We say f is going to act on x in some way. It's going to operate on it. And then it's going to create an output called y. That's how we've traditionally thought about this. Now, function encoding could mean inputting and uh, or outputting, excuse me, I should say, multiple parameters. So let's look at a base case. Let's say that we're going to feed our system two values, a and b. And in this case, I'm just going to use the numbers three and four as an example case. I'm going to feed it to this black box. And what I want to happen here, I'm just calling the function LCM. And I want to feed it those two numbers. And what I want maybe on the output side is I want it to give me the least common multiple. So if you, you know, three, six, nine, 12, four, eight, 12, 12 is the first number, uh, first multiple of both numbers that uh, 12, 12 is in common. If they have to, they have 12 in common. So the inputs we often call parameters. The function name in this case is LCM. And here in parentheses, we specify the input, just like we do with a mathematical function. And then we get an output, which we call return values, or a return value in this case. Another example would be, maybe I'm going to input two numbers into my function, but I'm going to create this function called arith, A-R-I-T-H, of A and B. And what I want this function to do is, I don't know, I want it to return two values. I want it to return the sum of the two values. And I want that function to return the difference A minus B. So it's going to return a value of 7, because 3 plus 4 is 7. And it's also going to return a value of negative 1, because 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So I can write functions that return more than one value. So we're only going to be focusing on just returning one value here, but that's kind of the difference between functions. Functions only output one value in mathematics, but you can output basically a whole array of values if you want. So again, there are my parameters, A and B. The function name is A-R-I-T-H. The return values are 7 and negative 1. To create this function in, temp, uh, in, in Octave, a good template is this. So this is how you do it each and every time. The things in the between the less than and the greater sign, greater than sign brackets is basically the what we're going to call the variable. So we, we set it up like this each and every time. Function it has to be the word function. And then the name of the variable you want to return. So if you want to return uh, you know, a total, then maybe it makes sense to call that variable total. So you can say function total equals, and then fun name, that's the name of the function that you're going to call it. So uh, we'll see in a moment, we're going to create one uh, that's, that's going to have its own function name. And then inside the parentheses, we specify what parameters we're going to let the user feed in. So here it could be parameter one, parameter two, you can have as many as you want. You could have just one, you could have 10, you could really have as many as you want. So next step after that is, then you indicate what your program is going to do, what that function is going to do. So it's going to do some stuff. And then uh, at some point, there's going to be uh, an assignment made to the return variable. And then when you run that function, it's going to return the return value. Let's take a look at one built-in. Oh, you have to use end to end that function. Let's take a look at one example in Octave to see how we actually use functions on a regular basis. So here I am in Octave. Uh, and if, let's say I want to compute the least common multiple. So that's already a defined function, and uh, the function is LCM. Okay, so I would type in LCM and parentheses and then the two values I want to give it. So let's say three and four. So I'm running this function. I'm saying, hey, I want to run the LCM function, and I'm going to feed it parameters three and four. And I press enter, and the output is 12. So 12 is actually the return value of this function. Now notice. I didn't write any code to actually compute the least common multiple. I just called the function name, and then it specifies the return value. 
Now I can do things like LCM and I can put in more numbers and see what it does. In this case, it's, it turns out that LCM could even compute the least common multiple of three numbers. Can I do four? Uh, looks like I can do four. In this case, it might be true that the LCM function accepts many return uh, input values. I'm going to try this real quick here. Uh, let's see. So here I am, just uh, this is MathWorks. This is a MATLAB's website. You can Google a function, you know, uh, how to compute least common multiple in MATLAB if you already know what it's called. Here it is LCM. So this one tells me that it's going to return a value called capital L, and uh, it's this is the format I use, the syntax. I type in L LCM parentheses and then uh, value comma value. It tells me what it returns the least common multiple of the elements of A and B. And it shows me some examples of how to use it. So here, I uh, notice that uh, you can even create a, a, a matrix. This is what we'll call a matrix. Uh, and you can add a key to the matrix of values, apparently, and find the least common multiple between each of these matrix values and uh, the number 45. There's some other things you can do with it. It tells you what the arguments are. So input arguments, they can be scalars, vectors, or arrays of real positive integer values. Uh, probably beyond the scope of what we really need to get into here, but this is uh, the documentation for uh, how to write functions. So let's write our own. Let's write one that is going to, we'll call, we're going to call this function uh, uh, MULT, M-U-L-T. So that's the function name right there. And so what I put in blue here is basically my input. So I'm going to call this function prod, P-R-O-D, because what I want this function to do is I want it to multiply all the values, val1, val2, val3. Now keep in mind, I can call this whatever I want. I can call it um, P-R-O-D-U-C-T-S for products. These things that I'm putting in here are just my naming convention. So M-U-L-T is not some shortcut to say multiply. It's just I called it that so I could remember what this function does. And so I have a return value, I'm going to call it P-R-O-D. So basically what this function is going to do is once I execute the code, it's going to go try to find where I made an assignment to P-R-O-D, and it's going to display that value to the screen. So let's let's take a look at this. So what's it going to do? Well, it's going to input three numbers, and I just called them val1, val2, val3, which is pretty much call whatever you want. And then now I'm going to actually tell it what to do. I'm going to say, all right, I want you to take val1 plus val2 plus val3, and I want you to assign it to the variable P-R-O-D, and then I want you to end. And so basically when I run this, I should be able to just say M-U-L-T, type in my three numbers, and it should output the product of those three numbers. So let's go run this in Octave. Uh, we will create this script. So I've already got one here created. Now keep in mind, the thing that's very important is the function name, in this case M-U-L-T is what I've chosen to call it, must be the same as the script name. If it's not, it's going to throw an error. Um, the, re the return value needs an assignment to occur. So if I had just typed in val1 plus val2 plus val3, but I didn't assign it to prod, the function wouldn't output anything. Uh, it wouldn't return any values. you got to tell it not only what the name of the variable is that you want to return, but also the, the prod has got to have some sort of value attached to it. Um, the return value needs an assignment to occur. Now, also I want to mention that these input parameters are all what we call local variables. So just because there's three variables called val1, val2, val3, if you go into, after you run the function, you're like, I wonder what val1 was, and you type in val1, you're going to get an error because these are locally declared and, and assigned variables, meaning that after this function terminates, these variables are deleted. They no longer exist in memory. So uh, that's one of the useful things, and you can make them global, but we're not going to get into that here. So let's go type this function in. Um, so we're going to start off by typing in the word function. We always start with that. Now I'm going to declare what I want the variable to be called that I want it to return. I'm going to call it prod. That's going to be easy for me to remember. Equals, so function, then the return variable name, then the, the equal sign. Now I'm going to create the function name. So I, I decided I want to call it M-U-L-T. Now inside the parentheses, I'm going to type in the number of parameters that I want this function to accept. So I want it to accept three that I call val1, val2, and val3. I'm just going to space these out a little bit to make it easier to read. Now I'll begin. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to end this function. I'm going to create my template first. That way I don't forget uh, to end it later on. And you don't need to indent here. Uh, so I'm going to just create a little bit of spacing here so I can see it easily. And we said that we wanted prod to take on the value of val1 plus val2 plus val3. Okay. So there we go. I'm going to save this function. And now I can run it, but the whole purpose of doing this is that I don't want to see the script. So 
let me close this script. Whoops. I wonder if I can, um, I don't know that I can close it right off the bat here. Uh, but if I, if I go into my, I don't have to have this function open. I can do MULT and now I can feed it three numbers. So let's say uh, two, two and three. So two times two is four times three is 12. So this should output 12. Uh, and it does it. Oh, sorry. No, we didn't do the, we wanted this to be a product, but I put plus signs in here. So clearly that's not right. So I, I want to multiply these three quantities together. If I had wanted the sum, then I could put in plus signs there. And now I should get 12, which I do. Um, notice it outputs it twice. It outputs PROD equals 12. That's because I didn't put a semicolon here. I put a semicolon there. Um, and now I can do it again. And then it just gives me the return value of 12. Um, if I type in, notice that val1, val2, and val3 are nowhere to be found. They were actually created as part of this process. If I type in val1, I'm going to get an error, val1 undefined near line one column one. Okay. Um, now, if I try to do other things, like I only feed it two inputs, like one and two, press enter, it's going to say val3 undefined near line two column 22. Now you're like, well, where's val3? Well, it's reaching back to the code and saying, well, you didn't input the number of parameters you're supposed to put in. You only put in two. Um, also, I'm going to point out one thing. If I, I misspell this, and my function is called MULT, I save this. I put, uh, whoops. Uh, I type in MLT because now it's called MLT. One, two, three. It's the MLT undefined near line one column. What do, you, what do you mean? I defined it over here. I saved it. Okay, maybe I'm going to try MULT. One, two, three. Um, warning function name MLT does not agree with function name file name. So I guess you get a warning. I guess this one, uh, some you know, Octave maybe is able to catch it. I think MATLAB will return an error, but good convention to keep these two names the same. One's going to have a dot .m, this one's not going to have a dot .m. All right. Uh, also, there's one thing that you can do uh, that's called error handling. And error handling is something you can do. Like, for example, if the user inputs three values, and um, let's say I, I only want this person to enter in um, Oh, by the way, I want to show you one more thing before we do error handling. Is if I take this away, this assignment, I save it, and now I go to run this multiplication function, nothing interesting happens. You're like, oh, wait, where's the output? There is none because the only thing this function is supposed to return is PROD, and PROD has not been assigned any value yet, so there's no output. Put that back in there. Product equals val1 times val2 times val3. Oops, come back over here. I fix in again, run it. Okay, great. There we go. Now it's getting a return value. Now, if I had, um, if I wanted to call this something else, like, you know, uh, maybe I want to call it product, then I have to change that variable over here as well because now what I'm, what I'm saying that I want to return is different than what I'm making an assignment to. Now, it's not going to throw an error because PRID is just a new variable that's being created, but unfortunately, it's not the name of the return variable. So you're not going to get a return value. Uh, so if you want to change the name of that, you've got to change the name of where you make that assignment. So now if I do 1, 2, 3, it'll again multiply those three numbers. Uh, change the names of the values. Again, the only thing that needs to be the same is function equals parentheses and end. Those all need to be consistent. So let's just say that I, I wanted the user to only be able to input um, positive numbers. So I can actually throw in an if statement here, and I can say if val1 or val2, or val3, oh, sorry, val1 is negative, so less than zero, or val2 is less than zero, or val3 is less than zero. What I want this function to do is to, to return an error. So rather than type in f print f, I'm gonna type in the word error, and I'm gonna specify what it should output. Uh, negative values not allowed, okay? And so that will actually appear not just as a print statement, it will actually throw an error. So that's the difference between a print and a print uh, within an error statement. Then I can just say, okay, well, if it's as long as those values aren't negative, then I want you to actually run that uh, statement. And I've got to end my if. One of these ends is for my if. The, out, the bottom one is for my function. Now, if I click save, I should be able to run multi one, two, three without a problem. But now, if I change one of these to negatives, ah, see, error negative value is not allowed. So not only does it print, but it also gives it to me as an error, and it tells me where it was, that error was located within the code, line four, column five, so there, that was, that's what caused the error.